Okay, folks, good Wednesday night. It is 11.10 p.m. on August 24, 2022. I hope you all had a great day today. Hope you all stayed positive and was had a, had positive vibes out there. Um, me and Philip will be back. Me and Philip Fields will be back this Friday night as Horatio travels to Foreman to take on the Gators. Me and Philip will be back covering your Horatio Lions football again this year for 2022. Uh, 104.5 and 1390 AM, KDQN, your Spanish hit station. We'll be there with all the action. Pre-game show at 6.30. Game will kick off at 7. And remember, Rex Nelson will be live with all the scores and the scoreboard show at 10 o'clock every Friday night after all the action. So please remember that. Uh, let's give you a quick preview of Horatio and Foreman. Horatio will be traveling to Foreman on Friday night. Um, got a got a good group back this year from last year. They, they showed a lot of improvement from last year. Were really competitive. Beat Dirks on the road in the last minute. Shut out Murfreesboro at Murfreesboro. Shut out Foreman. Uh, gave foul problems. Lost by point there last year. Lost by two scores to Genoa Central, 28-14. And lost by nine at home to Jesseville to, to end the year. So... Horatio showed improvements a lot from last year, so they're this is going to be a better football team. So, I think a schedule, and the schedule is going to be a little more tough. They have got they're still in the five three A, but there's a few new teams in there. Perennial Powers, Junction City, and Gurdon is there. Falk is much improved. Uh, Smackover is also in the district this year. So, um, let me get a quick preview of the Lions, and then we'll get you on to the preview of the Forming Gators. Um, all information for team previews every week when I do these videos will come from the annual 2022 Hootens Arkansas Football Guide. There is our, there's a man, Sam Pittman and KJ Jefferson and Bumper Pool on the cover. Sorry, I had to have a Wilson Wilson moment there. Um, multiple offense, multiple defense. It's going to be a lot of four-man fronts. Uh, we'll see a lot of four-two-five stuff defensively from Horatio again this year. Offensively, I think they'll be a little more wide open, a little more spread-based. They might go with a little more power set, some eye formation, maybe a little bit of flex bone. Uh, we honestly don't know. Last week, uh, they scrimmaged Mineral Springs, and they moved the ball really well. Um, had a couple of struggles with turnovers, so Horatio's really going to have to do that. Uh, not real deep this year, so this is going to be a depth thing. So conditioning is going to be a big factor for the Lions if they have any chance of making the playoffs for the first time in five years. <coughs> Um, let's give you a quick um, preview. Uh, Kevin Quiroz is going to be running back. He ran for 117 yards and two scores last year against Falcons. Also caught a touchdown pass last year against Dirks. Um, Jake Carraway comes in at running back. Was the strongest skill player. 225 pound hang clean, 335 pound squat, 355 pound day deadlift, which is a really tough lift. I have to admit, I remember that from when I was in high school. Jace Hankins will be back again this year. He scored three touchdowns on 22 receptions. Case Davis comes back, and he had some great hands last year. Brennan Roscoe was a uh, Swiss Army knife for Horatio. They're going to do some stuff. Um, the running game is going to be there. Um, they only averaged about 2.2 yards about two, year, two years ago in 2020, but they averaged six yards a carry last year, and they nearly ran for 2,000 yards. So this is going to be a rebuild line. Trey Bradford up front is the running back. Carlson won. The strongest lion, 315-pound uh, bench press, 440-pound squat, and 425-pound deadlift. He's going to be back after an injury last year. Uh, Christian Hernandez is back. He's six foot one, 260 pounds. Um, often Ishmael Tenero is going to be the kicker. He did really well last year, so he might he'll give the Lions a weapon. He kicked a field goal last year against Foreman that pretty much won the game for him, though. Too gave him a three nothing lead after. The score of his first three quarters, and then he kicked a field goal to start of the fourth quarter, built some Horatio's momentum, and they ended up winning the game last year against Foreman. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a physical group. Um, defensively, Quiroz is one of the best linebackers. 38 tackles, two interceptions, four tackles for loss, and a fumble recovery. Jake Haraway is also going to help as a linebacker. Uh, Case Davis will also be there. Brandon Roscoe comes back as a corner. He had 24 tackles and a fumble recovery. Um, this is going to be an offense that's going to be able to score points, I think. If they can get into shootouts with people, I think they got a chance to win a few games. Depth is going to be a concern this year, not a deep roster. And a physical running game, just manage it. If, you, if they if Rachel can hold the ball for two-thirds of a game, three-quarters of a game, hold, have the ball for, say, 
25, 30 minutes of a football game, maybe 35, and the other team doesn't have that often, I think Horatio is going to be physical enough and tough enough. They're going to win some games. Depth is going to be the concern. Do they have enough depth? That's my biggest concern this year. I think they're going to be all right. They stay healthy, they stay together, and they avoid the injury bug and things of that nature. We can see a playoff team at the end of the year. All right, hang on one second. Let me stop this, and we'll do part two with a preview of the Forming Gators.